Welcome back guys, Lone Star Patriot here. Thanks for joining me. So today I want to look at a stock replacement for this Daniel Defense DDM4 V9 lightweight version. Now the stock that I've chosen to replace it with is actually this Mission First Tactical Battle Link Minimalist stock. Now for the longest time I wasn't really a huge fan of these stocks mainly because of the open design and the potential for this hook portion here to get caught up on gear. But as I've read more, it seems like this might be a good alternative. So what I want to do today is show you how it's installed and give you my overall initial impressions on it. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So starting with the removal of the Daniel Defense buttstock, the first thing I want to mention is that there are tabs, one on each side of the buttstock. And those are intended to be pushed down and to the right in order to remove the buttstock from the buffer tube. Now, the other thing to note is that this is fairly difficult to remove without having the gun mounted in a vise, so I definitely recommend doing that if you can. However, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to try to do it, of course, unmounted with both hands, one holding the rifle and one trying to remove the buttstock. So, with that being said, what I like to do is use my left hand to grab the buttstock and also use the index finger of my left hand to push to the right and down while using my right hand thumb to do the same thing of pushing to the right and down. So what we'll first do is move the buttstock to the most rearward position. And then from there, again, using my left hand to grab the buffer tube and index finger to push to the right and down. Using my right thumb to do the same thing, we'll try to remove the buttstock. and it comes right off. Okay, so one of the biggest selling points for the Mission First Tactical Minimalist stock is of course the weight savings. Now, Mission First Tactical does advertise this as being the lightest weight stock on the market, and on the packaging, it does indicate a total weight of 5.8 ounces, so we'll check that. And I wanna do a comparison with the Daniel Defense. So I have a basic kitchen scale here, and we'll first weigh the Daniel Defense. And that comes in at 8.95 ounces. And now for the MFT. That comes in at 5.99 ounces. So I don't quite get the 5.8 ounces, at least on my scale. But again, it could be a tolerance in the scale. It could also be a manufacturing tolerance with the stock itself. But within very close tolerance of what is advertised. Now that equates to approximately a three ounce difference between the Daniel Defense and the MFT. Now, depending on your scenario, whether you're patrolling or we just wanting to build a lightweight rifle for your own use, the three ounce difference can certainly add up pretty quickly. Okay, so I wanna take a look at how you determine whether your buffer tube on your rifle is either a commercial tube or if it's a mil spec tube. Now. I know on my data defense that this is a mil spec tube, so we'll confirm that. But there are two primary ways to verify if your buffer tube is mil spec versus commercial. The first being the end angle here of the buffer tube to the top of the buffer tube. So in this case, the, the mil spec will be exactly perpendicular from the end of the tube to the top of the tube, which is how mine is. And knowing it's a mil spec, that confirms it. Now on a commercial buffer tube, the end angle here will be five degrees off from vertical compared to the top of the buffer tube. Now, if you're not able to tell the angle here very easily, you can also compare the outside diameter of the buffer tube. So on a mil spec buffer tube, the OD should be 1.148 inches. However, on a commercial tube, that should be 1.168 inches. So the commercial version is slightly larger in diameter versus the mil spec. Now, to confirm that, I have a set of calipers that we'll use to check that. And that is actually exactly 
1.148 inches. So between those two checks, I can definitely confirm this is in fact a mil-spec buffer tube, which is why I purchased the MFT mil-spec stock. Okay, so getting started with the installation of the new MFT stock onto the buffer tube, the first thing I wanna mention is that there is a spring-loaded pin here that protrudes out from each side of the stock, and that has to be fully depressed downward in order to slide the stock onto the buffer tube. So I'll try to show you that pin here. And on the other side, So just like the removal of the Daniel Defense, I definitely recommend trying to install your rifle into a vise. That way it gives you both hands to install the stock. However, I'll try to do it working, of course, without a vise and bracing the rifle against my leg to use both hands to depress this pin to slide it onto the buffer tube. So let's get started. So first just slide the stock all the way on to where it seats against that pin and then from there what I want to do is try to use both hands to shift this pin and in my case down or to the left and then the stock should slide onto the tube just like that so now that we have the new MFT stock onto the buffer tube, of course, now we can adjust our positioning of the stock onto the tube as we like. So again, you want to just check the fitment of the stock onto the buffer tube. And I've read some reviews that this stock is actually very difficult to get onto the buffer tube. However, I do find that on mine, it does move fairly smoothly. So I don't really have too many issues in terms of moving this to my desired position. But one of the nice things to note is that, say if I engage in a specific pin, pin location, there is absolutely no wiggle of this stock onto the buffer tube. So it definitely locks in very securely in the position that you set it in. All right, guys, so to wrap up the installation and my initial review of the Mission First Tactical Battlelink Minima stock, I want to cover some of the pros and cons. So if we start out with the cons, there are really three things that I foresee as being potential issues, or at least in my opinion, might be of concern. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, the open design in terms of getting caught on gear might be an issue. Now, MFT does sell cordage that runs from these two points to bridge the gap to prevent that. Now, if you have cordage at home, it's just a simple cobra weave, and I may do that myself down the road if I find that to be a problem. Now, the second thing is that the stock itself is completely smooth on top. Now, compared to the Daniel Defense, the Daniel Defense does have a texture, a rubberized texture on top of the stock, which I've found gave me a, an aggressive cheek weld or a positive purchase whenever I was using the rifle, which I did like. Now, in the event of, say, using this in rain, maybe sweat, blood, for example, it might be a smoother surface to where I don't have as good of a cheek weld as, say, on the Danny Defense. Now, the last item, probably the most important concern for me, is the lack of a QD mount position in the corner of the stock like I had on the Danny Defense. The QD mount position on this stock is actually on the underneath side here, which is really in an odd spot in my opinion. Again, it might get in the way of the cordage that runs between these two points if you decide to add that. So the only real way to mount a sling is to strap a sling directly to the stock, say in this position here, but it just doesn't give me the ease of use of say a QD mount in terms of attaching a sling and detaching the sling. Now, moving on to the pros. Obviously, the biggest pro of this is the weight. So as we saw earlier, this gives me a three ounce savings over the Daniel Defense stock. And as I mentioned earlier as well, MFT has indicated this is the lightest stock on the market. Now, this is made in the USA as well. 
it is made of a tough polyamide plastic. It's actually out of DuPont's military plastic division. It does have a lifetime warranty on the stock. And there are several color options of these butt stocks. And it comes in black, of course, as you see here. It has a scorched start earth, which is more of a FDE color or coyote color. It comes in a gray as well as a foliage green. Now, the other benefit that I see is it does have an angled butt pad, which I like in terms of indexing the weapon on my shoulder. And lastly is gonna be the price. So on the MFT site, these retail for $59.99. However, I've found that you can find these a lot of times for less than $50. Actually, I bought this from jet.com for just over $30, which in my opinion is a great deal for the benefits of this particular stock. So you can find, find these inexpensively compared to a lot of the other aftermarket stocks out, out there. So hope this gives you another option to consider. But thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and keep up the good fight. Alright guys, so to wrap up the installation of this Mission First Tactical Battling Mission Minimalist the stock onto the buffer tube. So the first thing we'll do is 